June, the president of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, appointed Olawale Fasoya as the DG CEO of Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria, Sweden. On this edition of the exclusive with Kemi Ajmobi, he tells me about his vision, his goals as the new DG. It promises to be an interview that will help SMEs and other business owners on how to run their businesses and funds that are available at their service. Welcome to another edition of Exclusive with Kemi Ajmobi. And like I always say, sit back, relax and enjoy. Thank you so much for giving us your time, sir. We're truly grateful. I know you have one or two things to do, so I'll just go straight um, to the point. While I was going through the research on you, um, after you were appointed as a DG and CEO of Smedan, I found out that you've been one of the pioneers of Smedan. So take us through that process of being a pioneer and how you've also helped to build Smedan to what it is today. Yeah, thank you very much. You know, the agency came into being in 2003 uh, with an act of the National Assembly. Uh, the agency was set up primarily to develop MSMEs in all ramifications. I'm proud to the emergence of SMEDA. There has not been any agency that uh, has been in charge of a coordinated approach to SME development. So when we came on board, uh, initially the Act says uh, the agency should be called SMEDA, Small and Medium Industry Development Agency. Uh, but when we came on board, we find out that if you say just industry, you have to look at the commerce side. And uh, so in order to make it, you know, uh, more encompassing, we change the name to Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency, as it is in some other parts of the world, you know. I was part of it when we started, just three or four of us. We started in uh, one room on a table like this, you know. So, and uh, we have been able to grow it to what it is today. Uh, the initial approach uh, is to provide business information. Uh, so we started by going to all the states to sensitize governors on the need uh, for them to embrace SME development. Because uh, going by our initial statistics, we found out that the economy is actually running on SMEs. Because uh, if you look at the population of large businesses in Nigeria, they are not up to 1 million. Uh, so when we had a survey that says we have 41.5 uh, MSMEs in Nigeria, out of that 41.5 million, the total number of uh, even small businesses and big put together is not up to 2 million. So the rest are nano, what we can now call nano and micro uh, small businesses. The medium ones are very few, the large ones are very few. So uh, the agency now have the, um, the mandate to make sure that we now can hold a number of these small businesses. And majority of them operate informally. So part of what we started doing was to even see how many of them we can formalize. So we we'll try to move them from informality to formal, especially the micro businesses. But along the line, uh, we find out that uh, when you say micro businesses, those are businesses that are employing up to nine persons. And uh, we find out that the, it's too elastic. So we now came up with nano businesses, which are one-man businesses, because they are also in majority. You know, when you look at it, so people employing just one person plus themselves. Self-owned businesses that just run on the owner or the owner employing one or two people. So we now segregated, and that's why we now have nano businesses, different from micro. You know. So well, all the longer, then you know when we came on board, uh, the initial thinking of everybody that is in business is that the problem is fund. But people don't think that it's not just about money. You need to build your capacity to run your business. 
You know, most people who start businesses and they die at infancy. People who are retired, they get their pension, they see their neighbors running a bakery. They also want to start a bakery because they see him riding cars. They don't know if his children are sending the cars to him. So most Nigerians do business by perception. You know, so we want to fill that gap. So we concentrate more on building capacities, providing business development support services, and a host of other business information for people to start their business. So we also started in our offices what we called business clinic. So you can walk in and then talk to us so we can shape your mind towards a particular business. Or if you're already running your business, you can come in and then we diagnose the problems and we try to provide solutions. But it's been a cool end because most times we build people's capacity, they are not able to access funds. So it is a major issue. Yes. So along the line, we now started thinking of programs that uh, can be inclusive of a little funding and capacity building. Mm. So in recent times, we have to roll out programs like uh, the conditional grant scheme, where we assist the nano businesses with little fund. Uh, is a grant, you know, maybe not more than 50,000, 100,000, but it goes a long way for a one man business. And then we have the matching fund program where we match fund with uh, funding agencies like banks. You know, we bring some money, they also match with us, and then we now dictate the interest. And then we can actually write up the interest from our own counterpart fund. You know, so we started this uh, about two years now, uh, and uh, we are concentrating on agribusiness. So as an agribusiness owner, you can access uh, between 2.5 and 5 million to inject into your business. Payback at very minimal interest rates, maybe maximum 6% or so. But you know, uh, we still run on government subvention. You know, our budget is solely from government. So we don't have big money to put. Uh -huh. But I think we've been able to do, at least this year now, with the banks we are matching fund with, we have Bank of Agri, Fidelity, uh, Jais Bank, uh, we've been able to pull about 500 million. You know, and uh, this would be banks we are lent to beneficiaries. Nice, nice. Well, as um, are there any initiatives that you intend to put to the floor? What are the things that you intend to do at DD that would be different from what you predecessor? Yeah, you know, over time, uh, we now know exactly where the shoe pinches small business and like growing businesses. So, like I said, one of the major things is capacity. But now we don't want to continue doing just classroom kind of training and all that. So what I intend to put a lot of emphasis on, uh, and I've briefed my staff, and uh, we are currently training them to provide advisory services. There are a lot of people out there doing their business, but they don't have the requisite knowledge. So we will go out. We will make sure that um, we send out our staff. They will now be like extension officers who will visit you uh, where you are doing your business, ask you questions, prefer solutions, advice services. It goes a long way. So if we now discover that, okay, your problem is funding, we identify a funding agent. And like I said, Apart from the matching fund, we are also, before the end of the year, uh, we want to experiment with a microfinance institution. We already have subscribers from the private sector. Uh, we have some BMOs like uh, AWEP, Association of Women uh, Entrepreneurs, uh, NASMI. They all want to have shares. So we are virtually ready. You know, it's just for us to finalize the license with the CBN. And this we will do in the next few weeks so that we can also fund in a little way. And then when we take off, we are looking at getting uh, some other funders, even internationally, to come and help us uh, capitalize the bank. You know, we are also talking to CBN to see what uh, uh, we can also do together to make sure that uh, at least we fill the gap of access to funding. Yeah. We are also training our staff to be able to assist 
SMEs put together bankable business plans because most times this is a problem. Yes. Uh -huh. Most of them, they don't really know what to do. So we'll be filling that gap, you know. So, and there were approaches of states to start what we will call uh, BDS volunteers, uh, business development service volunteers that will train. So even a state, a state government is ready to get some youth together to train them. And then we ask state government to pay them stipends so that that will not come from us. But it's a way of taking the youth out of the street. So they too will be complimenting us by going to provide advisory services to SMEs. So these are some of the initiatives. And then we also know that a lot of SMEs don't have uh, where to practice what they know. They find it very difficult to get workspace. So we have uh, 23 industrial development centers scattered all over the country. So we intend to use these industrial development centers to provide workspace for as many SMEs that they can take. Some of them, uh, they have land space of about 25 hectares, and we have not been able to put them to use. So I want to direct my energy to make sure that uh, we allocate them to SMEs, let them be in there so that they can have workspace. And then within those uh, IDCs, we will bring in regulatory agencies like NAVDAC, um, uh, NEPC, other agencies that have one thing or the other to do with SMEs. And we also intend to work with the science and tech to have incubation centers within those IGCs. So you can incubate your business and practice it there. We also have innovation hubs where young people can go to you know, use office space because they cannot afford offices. You know, there are a lot of young people with bright ideas. You know, what they need is just a space. Yes. And then they can do e-commerce and all sorts. You know, I was going to talk about the young people and that it's quite interesting that you're mentioning it because there are lots of young people who are into different things and they just need support. So I was going to ask you what Smedan is doing to help you. But I think you mentioned that already and asking you that you were Thank you. However, SMEs are open to cyber attacks because they're not really need. Charlie because are just starting up and not too with you know how to work with the net and all of those things. What is Smedan doing to help to guide them against cyber attacks? Yeah, we are currently partnering with Google and we are also partnering with Facebook to train a lot of youth, you know, on their cyber security and how they can run their business profitably uh, online. You know. So we are going to go to all the 36 states. Uh, I think just last week uh, we had, I think, about 200 youths. We trained them in Kano on cyber security, you know, and we are working with NIDA to make sure that uh, we put a lot of information out there on uh, cyber security, especially as it relates to small and growing businesses. My, my next question would be, what are the um, initiatives and policies that Smenal is putting in place to help to ensure that SMEs enjoy growth in their businesses? Yeah, we have, um, currently we have a national policy, MSMEs, and that national policy prioritizes a lot of things. And fortunately, this time around, we are working with development partners to make sure that that policy is seamlessly implemented. We are not just saying we have a policy that is in one file. We want to make sure that the policy is implemented to the letter. And how are we doing this? We already have uh, what we call FOCA uh, officers from different MDAs that we put together. We are training them. They will be working with us. Uh, we have what we call SME councils in different states of the Federation. About 24 states have keyed in. They've inaugurated their councils. We are appealing to other states to also have their councils. So these councils will have all agencies, even both private and uh, uh, public agencies, that have one thing or the other to do with SME. So that, and everybody will have uh, the policy, you know, as their as, as their guide, you know, so that they will be able to now touch all the nitty gritty that's contained, and then we are monitoring it to make sure that uh, the policy is being implemented. We now have uh, a coordinated approach to. Uh, SME policy implementation. And that policy gives a lot of priority to youth, a lot of priority to students, 
you know, so that uh, while they are in school, we are already reorientating, reorientating them so that when they leave school, most of them can become business owners. You know, the policy also recognizes people with disabilities. You know, just yesterday we trained, uh, I think, 100. We couldn't do more than that because we intend to empower them. So we'll be moving on like that. And I even said yesterday that uh, we're going to organize special fairs for PWDs because these people, they are disabled, but they are not mentally disabled. So some of them are producing wonderful products. So we want to showcase them and also uh, see a way that we can open markets for them. We can get off takers for their products, you know. So these are some of the things we intend to do moving forward. With many organizations, their challenges. So we're going to ask people what are the challenges that this um, that is facing, and how are you rising above the challenges to ensure that it doesn't affect you know, the carrying on of work as you help? Well, you, you know, the, you cannot run away from challenges. There are a lot of challenges confronting small businesses, especially in Nigeria. Level of insecurity is one issue. Infrastructure, you know, most times SMEs go through a lot, and that's why they are not as competitive as. Uh, some others in other climate because they have to provide their own water at times provide their own route to where their business is they have to provide electricity for themselves so all these things by the time they invest in these things it's already eroded into their capital at least you know so but some of these things are beyond our control and that is why we are now focusing on clusters of businesses and trying to form SMEs into cooperatives where we try to assist them. For example, we have a program called One Local Government, One Product. We've been to virtually all local governments and we are still going. Uh, we are still getting people, we put them together as a cooperative. We identify machines that can automate what they are doing, especially if they are in the same value chain of business. And then we give them a little capital, you know. So if we identify machine, for example, if you are producing granite oil, maybe you are doing 10 gallons a day, we look at machines that can make you produce 20 gallons. And then we train you, and then we provide machine, and we, we write off 30 percent. We pay back 70 percent so that we can help other people. So these are some of the things we are doing to, you know, confront the issue of uh, infrastructure and other things that are outside our control. And the issue of workspace, like I said, we are also trying to see how we can provide workspace. I mean, I remember having a conversation with you before you started, and I said one of the things that you're passionate about is unemployment and finding a way to ensure that people are employed. And one of the things that COVID had caused is that a lot of people lost their jobs and a lot of businesses also suffered. In what ways are you helping to encourage um, employment and what is Medan doing um, about this? Well, most of the, this our youth program is actually to encourage employment. We have a particular program that we call National Business Skills Development you know, Initiative. So what we do there is that we bring youths together, we train them, and we give them starter packs. And then we now monitor them thereafter. So if we give you a starter pack, maybe within six months, you are able to now enlarge your business, you'll be able to employ one or two persons. You know? And that is why I said we also deploy officers to visit them, to try to help you solve some of your problems you know the issue of funding which i told you is major we are putting a lot of attention to see how to attract funds for SAP, to see where they can access funds at single digit interest rates we just recently also uh, were working on a portal called um, uh, credit information portal for SMEs, so that when you go on that portal you'll be able to know which funding windows are available with banks, at what interest, and how can you access it? And uh, we can assist you. In fact, we, our intention is to get banks to key into the portal. So you can actually apply through that portal, and then we follow up for you to make sure that you access funds. But you know, these days, a number of banks have also approached us that they have SME-friendly uh, loans that they don't really require collateral. 
I know recently IBTC, our Fidelity Bank, came to us and we're going to partner with them to make sure that uh, uh, SMEs are able to have information. Because most times the problem is even information. So we are also making sure that in all our 36 state offices and the FCT, we have business information centers and SME clinic, like I said. So those people will be providing information to you. If your problem is NAVDAC number, we'll provide information and we we'll link you up and we we'll follow up so that it doesn't take you a long time to get your NAVDAC certification. So if we now are sure that your problem is funding, we will know where to where we we'll refer you to. If it is not within you know, those initiatives that we are also complementing funding with uh, capacity building. Thank you so much, Mr. Olawale Fasmaya. It's been really nice speaking with you. But before you go, I want you to look at the camera. Which of the cameras are you looking at? This one. And then just, you know, speak to that person who has a business and is struggling. Or that person who um, has been in for a long time and is experiencing issues. What is Smedan out to let people know? And what would you want to say to, to them also? Yeah, well, what I will start by saying uh, our slogan, which is uh, Think Big or start small. Most people think until they have millions before they can start a business. No, but that is not the usual case. And then if you are running your business, you are having issues, you can reach out to us. We are going to provide you advisory services and guide you so that uh, uh, within a little time, you overcome some of your business challenges. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. We are honored to have you, like I said earlier, and we wish you the best in your new office, and we trust that you will perform beyond the words and put actions to it, because we are seeing that already, and we trust that when next we see you, we'll be hearing more stories of the amazing things that you have done, trust me. So thank, thank you very you much. Very thank you. It's been a very revealing interview with the DJ CEO of Smedan in person of Mr. Olawale Fasmaya, and we look forward to hearing more from him as time goes by in his new office. Thank you for being a part of the exclusive with Kemi at Jinovi. I'll be back again real time, real soon, with somebody else who will be sharing the story with us and telling us more about what they're doing in their respective offices. Take care.